Hi YouTube and welcome to my channel. My name is Patrick and today we're going to set up a Linux storage server using a virtual machine and ZFS. I'm excited to get to share this with you so let's go ahead and get right started. Alright so this diagram kind of summarizes what we're going to be doing here. Uh, so we have a Proxmox server, that's what the blue is, that's the physical server. And then we have a couple disks. We have a 500 gig SSD and a 128 gig SSD. What we're going to do is make that 500 gig a ZFS disk, and then we're going to pass that along to the Ubuntu virtual machine that we're creating. We're going to mount that and format it as ext4 because it'll just show up as a block device. Then we'll set up a Samba share, which will connect to our client devices. Okay, so let's go into Proxmox and get started here. So first we're going to create a ZFS disk pool. Uh, we're just going to name this storage. It's going to be single disk, and we're going to use that 500 gig SSD. Okay, so that's done, and you can see now that we have a ZFS pool with this storage disk. Uh, so now we need to set up the server. As you can see, I have the server installing. We'll give that just a moment, and it should be ready for us shortly. Now, in a production environment, you'd probably want to set up a, a ZFS pool with multiple disks and some level of redundancy. Uh, we're not trying to do things perfectly right here today. And this is more of just an example to go ahead and get you started with these concepts and we'll see if we can set up something, something cool for our network. So let's talk a little bit more about the setup here. Uh, so you might be wondering, why am I bothering making this disk a ZFS pool before piping it into the server, uh, rather the virtual machine? Well, my reasoning for that is that I, I want to be able to do a ZFS uh, send and replication. I have another disk here on the server, and what I want to do is make it so that it automatically sends a ZFS snapshot from this 500 gig SSD to this one terabyte disk that I have installed on the physical server. Uh, I prefer to do my backups that way. Uh, my, my reasoning is that if my virtual machine dies, I still want to be able to access the data on that ZFS pool. Uh, so this will be an easy way for me to set up backups. Now we're not going to get into setting up backups on this today. Right now, we're just looking to get the proof of concept going and see if we can set up our storage server. Okay, so now our server is ready to go. We're going to cancel the update and reboot it. And while we wait on that, let's go ahead and connect our disk. So I'm going to go into hardware here, and then we're going to add a disk. We're going to put it, we're going to pipe it from the storage ZFS pool, and we're going to give it uh, 480 gigabytes. It said that there was 482 available, so that'll work just fine. Ah, there we go. Okay, so I had to make it a little bit smaller. I'm sure that's just the difference between gig gigabytes and gigabytes. So I just set it to 350 for now. That'll be just fine for this example. So let's go back to the server's console now. Alright, so this is going to take a minute to cancel the update, but hopefully it'll be done pretty quick here. You can see behind me what I've got is the output of the uh, hardware utilization of the hardware server. Right now we're using 8 gigs out of 30, and you can see the cores are working pretty hard up there. So that's just an easy way for me to keep an eye on it. So while we wait on this, let's talk about our sponsor. We're here today because of Raid Shadow Legends. No, I'm just kidding. I don't take sponsors. I don't monetize the channel. I'm doing this just for the subs and likes. So if you find this video any combination of interesting or informative, consider hitting the subscribe button down below. It means a lot to me, and when you do that, it tells me that you want to see more videos about using Linux to do cool stuff. So if that's the kind of thing you're interested in, definitely leave me a like and subscribe and I'll make more content like this that hopefully you find is worth a click in the future. Okay, it looks like our Ubuntu server is done cooking, so I'm just going to go ahead and remote into it. 
got my terminal here, so we'll, we'll just uh, blow that up a little bit. And username is Pat. IP address is that. Maybe it isn't. Yeah, it is. Oh, huh. Helps if I type the IP address correctly, doesn't it? There we go. So we are now connected to our server, and this is where things are going to get interesting. So first, we need to make sure that disk actually shows up on the server, so we're just going to do lsblk, and as you can see here, we have a disk sdbb, which is that 350 gigabyte size, so that's the disk we want to work with. All right, so now we're going to use fdisk, because at this point, at this point, the Ubuntu virtual machine just sees this storage as a block device. It doesn't see it as a ZFS pool. It doesn't know anything that's going on with it at the hardware level. It's abstracted so that it's just a, a block device like any other disk. So we need to initialize it. We need to format it. We need to partition it. I'm going to walk you through each and every step here. So we're going to start by using fdisk. Okay, so then we're going to type n for a new partition, and then p for a primary partition, and then we're going to accept the defaults, so default is 1, and then first sector, we're just going to leave that as the default, last sector, same thing, and then, okay, so it's created a new partition, so now we're going to hit w to write the changes to the disk, and, uh, yeah, that should be it. So if we run that again. Yep, you'll now see that we have that SDB1 partition on the disk. So now we need to actually make the file system on the disk. So for that, we're going to do sudo makefs ext4 dev sdb1. Okay, and you'll see that has now completed. Now we need to set up the mount point for the disk. So we're going to sudo make dir dash p mount disk1. Okay, so that's going to make the directory where we're going to mount the disk. And then we just need to mount it. So sudo mount dev sdb1. And then we're going to give it that directory we created. <coughs> Okay, there we go. So now we've, we've initialized the disk, we've given it a partition, we've mounted it to a folder, but now when we reboot the computer, well, it's going to forget about that mount point, so what we need to do is make that persistent and permanent. So for that, we're going to edit the fstab file. Okay, you need to be very careful while editing this file. If you make any typos, then unfortunately that will prevent your server from booting. So we'll just make a new line here. I'll just type it in manually. Okay, so let's just make sure we got that right. So, yep, that's right, that's right. XT4 defaults 0, 0. Okay, let's write that change to the FS tab file. And now we need to set up Samba. So Samba is going to be the technology, the software, that actually takes the storage that we've set up and makes it available on the network. So that's very simple. We're going to do sudo apt-update first to refresh the repositories. 
I've got an error there, but I'm not really worried about it. Uh, so we're going to do sudo apt install samba. Yes, we will allow the installation. Very straightforward. Okay, now we have Samba installed. So what we need to do next is actually uh, tell it where the storage is and how to share it across the network. So to do that, we're going to modify the uh, Samba configuration file that's located in Etsy, Samba, SMB, Dot conf. And you can see we have our default Samba file here. Uh, don't want to save that. Okay, there we go. Now we can actually edit it. So we're going to go down to the bottom of this file. Okay, now we're at the bottom. So now we need to add a little bit of text here to tell it about the uh, storage and the share that it's going to create. So we're just going to insert that right there. Very straightforward. Okay, so now we will save that change. And next we need to set up an identity to authenticate with the Samba share. So we're going to do sudo group add Samba share. And that already exists, that's fine. So then we're going to uh, do sudo user mod a, a g samba share and then pat is going to be our user. Now we need to set up a samba password to authenticate with. So that's very simple. We're going to do sudo smb password a Cat. New SMB password, so we're just going to make that something super secure, super secret. Alright, and now we have created the Samba password, so at this point we need to restart the SMB service. So we're going to do sudo systemctl restart smbd. Okay, so that should be working now. We're just going to try going to a server in Finder. And it's going to be smb192.168.1.210. We will continue. And it's asking for our password. Okay, and it's going to ask which disk to mount. And as you can see, we now have mounted our Samba share. Okay, and that's all there is to it. You can see that we've got our Samba share mounted here. And uh, it seems to be working just fine. Okay, and that's all there is to setting up a Samba share on Ubuntu Linux using Proxmox and ZFS and EXT4. I hope you found this video insightful and interesting. If you want to see more videos like this, again, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I try to post once a week, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.